Wow, these babies are the caterpillars of a giant silt moth that today I want to raise in captivity. Their name is the Promethea silt moth or the cherry silt moth. And today we are going to raise them all the way from tiny babies into large moths. You can raise these species on many plants, such as cherry, willow, sweet gum, spice bush, ash tree, privet, and more plants. The first instars are usually raised in containers with the lid removed and covered with netting for maximum airflow. Slowly and steadily they will grow bigger and shed their skins. The next instar is incredible. They develop zebra stripes in this life stage. And as you can see they are sti clearly still social and hang out in little groups. Cool behavior indeed. It's recommended to give them a lot of ventilation. And then they shed to instar number 3. Instar 3 is radically different. Now they are predominantly white with yellow, yellow tubercules. They are still somewhat social I suppose and hang out in groups. Their favorite leaves are sweet gum, spice bush, ash tree, tulip tree and a few others. Personally I think they are medium difficulty and don't recommend them to absolute beginners. Although they are also not super hard I suppose. And then they shed their skins to instar number 4. In this instar the tubercules become orange instead. It looks like instar 3 but bigger. But then... They shed their skins for the last and final time to instar number 5. In instar number 5 they are completely solitary and need more space for themselves and a bit more food. They have incredible red tubercules at this point in their life. And they become some of the coolest caterpillars that I have personally seen since recently. What a beautiful species, don't you think? Out of all the life stages, as usual the final one is the one that lasts the longest. As is usual in many other species of course. If you take care of them well then finally they will start spinning leaves between the cocoons. What? They will start spinning cocoons between the leaves. Tuh. Finally. The cocoons are papery and brown. Most of the time the cocoons will decide to hibernate and only emerge the following year. Although southern populations can have a second generation sometimes. To hibernate them the pupa must be stored cold in winter and in winter they must experience some cold temperatures. This is actually what breaks their hibernation, followed by them warming up in spring. Winter is a bad time for moth breeders unfortunately. I usually take a break from the hobby in this time. There is little you can do when most of your species hibernate. Spring is back! In spring I take the pupa and warm them up to room temperature. Finally! There we are! The moths finally came out. Here is the male. The male of this species is black and has cool dark and somewhat gothic colors. These moths only live for a short time as they cannot feed like most other Saturnidae species. Interestingly they fly during the day unlike many other Saturnidae that fly at night predominantly. And here is the female. Unlike the males, the females are rusty brown with rich color patterns. Absolutely beautiful. Which one do you think is more beautiful, males or females? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, the next step is to pair the males and females. No. Colosamia Promethea. It's just one of those species where the male and female looks completely different. Can you see it? The male is black, like completely dark black, which is quite beautiful. But the female, she has this ru rusty orange hue. And for somebody uh, who doesn't know anything about silk moths, they even may, ap may appear to be a totally different species. What's interesting is we have to be careful because the male of this species are day flying. That's right, this is one of the silk moths that fly during the day, not during the night. And I can see he's already getting excited, shivering his wings. So I will put him back very fast or he can fly away. Sunlight is very important. In spring I place the cage outdoors in moderate sunlight, but make sure they cannot overheat. This should activate the males, after which they start fluttering around in the cage. Slowly they will begin locating the females. Females spread pheromones and the males detect their odor, odor and start mating.
The mating looks like this. Males hang upside down below the females and hang onto them with their claspers. After successful matings, the female will lay many eggs that are fertile. Here are the eggs, life cycle completed. In two weeks time, the eggs of the moths tend to hatch, resulting in many small babies. Just where the video started, life cycle completed.